Hey Coda, right, it is now part two of our series of setting up our website. So right now we have an HTTP website, it doesn't have HTTPS, and we need to go and set up a domain to link to our website, and we're gonna do all of that using the AWS Load Balancer. Let's get into it. So the first thing we wanna do in AWS is just close any windows we had here from the last video. So I'm just gonna close these down and go over here within your EC2 window. So you should be here now familiar with EC2 and select down here, load balances, right? So when you go down here to your load balances, you can see I've already got one created for code raiders, but now we're gonna create one for this website that you've just developed. So you go here to create load balancer. So whenever you're developing a website, this is probably what you're going to use. So here you go to create and we're going to give it a name. So here I'm gonna call this the Sean McDonough uh, and here it's gonna be your uh, elastic load balancer. And it's gonna be internet facing, IPv4, that can all stay the same. And I'm going to allow it to work on any one of these regions over here. So now in terms of security groups, you can just get rid of this and just say allow public internet access, right? So same thing we did for our EC2, that's absolutely fine. Right now you can say, leave this here as HTTP port 80. And in terms of the target group, we haven't got one set up yet. So just go to create target group. Now the target group is gonna be, what do you want me to point to, right? So this load balancer needs to know where to look, where is your website basically. If you were hosting your website on AWS ECS over here, this is where you would actually use IP addresses. But because we're hosting on an EC2 instance directly, you want to use instances, right? This is what you want to select here. Now with ECS, if you're hosting on an EC2, which you can use on AWS ECS, you can host on EC2 instances here as well, then it might change, right? So if you're using Fargate or something like that, then you would use IP addresses, just so you know. But for now, let's stay consistent with what we've done and use instances here. Now the target group name here, I'm gonna say this is the Sean McDonough target group. And here, HTTP port 80 is absolutely fine. All of that is fine. I'm just gonna leave that all as is. If you do have a path that checks the health of a certain application, and in fact, on Code Raiders, we do have one. So if we go here to code, and I look at, I think it's this one over here, the full stack SaaS template with an API gateway. This over here does actually have a backend that has a health checkpoint to it, etc. If you are using that, this is where you put, you know, forward slash API underscore V1 underscore health. But if you don't have something like that set up, you don't have that check health check functionality set up on your site, just leave this as forward slash and click next over here. Great. Now it's saying, right, what do you want me to connect to? What do you want me to look at? And I'm gonna say, well, look at the Sean McDonough website because Code Raiders is separate. Just look at this one over here. This is the website we just created and go include as pending below. If you don't hit that, you're gonna run into problems. Great, now hit create target group. And that is now doing its magic, right? It's getting itself set up. You can see here right now it's getting set up. So let's go back to our load balancer over here, hit refresh, and there it is, Sean McDonough target group. So now it knows where to look at. So when somebody comes to HTTP and to the IP address, it's gonna forward it to this IP address here for this EC2 machine, excellent. So let's just skip everything there, scroll down and hit create load balancer. Excellent, now go to view load balancer and here is our load balancer here. So just select that down here and select listeners. And here you can see we've got a listener here for HTTP port 80. Now I want to add another listener here for HTTPS. And this is going to be where we make sure our website is secure. So default actions uh, over here, we don't really need to do anything. Just scroll down and here add a certificate. Now. I can't add a certificate for a domain because I haven't got one set up yet. So what I need to do here is I need to go to route 53 and I'm going to hit command and click on that. And I have a domain pointing to uh, this here, this coderaders.com and Sean McDonough, right? So you need to make sure whoever your hosting provider is, 
that you go and create a hosted zone. So you put in your domain name here and you put public hosted zone and create that. So if your domain name is, you know, mydomain.com, whatever it is, you just go and create that over here, create hosted name, right? I've already done that. I've got one set up for Sean McDonough and it can take, you know, up to 48 hours for your domain to point to AWS. So I did this days ago in anticipation for this video. So now I'm gonna go back here to where I was working with my listener and I'm going to say request new ACM certificate. So I'm gonna go and hit click that now. And you can see I've got one here for code raiders, but I'm now going to request one here. So I'm gonna go next and I need to put in my domain name. So seanmcdonough.com and all of that looks fine. So I'm gonna go and hit request here. And let me go and refresh this. And there it is, Sean McDonough. So now I can click on this certificate here and go create records in Route 53 because I've already got my domain in Route 53. So if I go and create records there and create records again, this is now getting my SSL certificate set up and it will auto renew, by the way. It, it's fantastic. AWS is fantastic for this. And that's all successfully created. So what I can do now is go back to my load balancer that I'm setting up and hit refresh. And in a minute, I should see my Sean McDonough one pop up over here. And there it is, seanmcdonough.com. So right, that takes about 30 seconds, but there it is. I've created my SSL certificate. I can select that here and we are almost good to go. I just need to add my action over here. And this is going to be to forward to a target group. I want to forward it to my Sean McDonough target group. Now you can set up more than one target group here, right? You can have another EC2 instance target group. And for example, if I did have that, I could split the traffic 50-50 or 30-70. I could do anything I wanted here, which can be very useful because maybe you have one EC2 machine that you stop and start and use for, you know, making new deployments, etc. And you want to reroute traffic away from the one that you're you know, doing updates on so that your users don't get impacted by that and then switch the traffic back. Or you might wanna have two different versions of websites working so you can do A-B testing and say, I want 70% going to this website and 30% of people going to this other one. So this is very, very useful. All right, now it lets us go and add that. So I'm gonna go and click add and let's just have a look down here. And here are my listeners for our load balancer, right? I've got HTTP 80 and HTTP 443. Now what I want to do is go and edit this HTTP port 81. And instead of forward to, I wanna remove that. I'm gonna say redirect. And I wanted to redirect here to port 443. And so what this means is anyone who tries to visit my website on HTTP, is automatically going to get forwarded to HTTPS. Brilliant. So I'm just gonna go here and save changes. And let's go down here to load balances and just select that again and just have a look here. Listeners. And there we go. I've got my listeners set up here just as they should be. My port 80, which is on HTTP, is gonna redirect to HTTPS port 443. Now, all I need to do is go back to my domain that I'm hosting on here, Sean McDonough, and I'm gonna create a record. So what you wanna do here is just select alias, choose an endpoint. And so here I want to use an application or classic load balancer. I called it an elastic load balancer, but that's fine. And then under region, I want to use North Virginia because that's where I'm hosting my machine. Now, my machine is being hosted here in US East 1A and it's in North Virginia. I can see that up here, North Virginia. So if I go back over here, I can now select North Virginia. And then here's my load balancer that I've gone and set up. Leave this all the same and create records. That has now been created, so now if I go to seanmcdonough.com, there's my website. It's all up and running. You can see it's secure. I've got that lock pad there. My SSL will automatically renew, etc. And it's HTTPS. And I can go and use my website 
However, I want to go and use it here, which is fantastic. It's brilliant. It was very useful to go through the series to show you that. Now, Coda, I hope that this was helpful for you. This was just to go and finish off from the previous video to get your website fully up and running and hosted. But now there are some things you can go and do to improve the robustness of your website. You can set up your websites to be ho hosted rather than on a public subnet, which is where they are right now by default, onto a private subnet. And again, if you want the link to that, let me know. I will put it in the description or in the comments below. And the only reason I'm not doing that here for this particular website, for example, is if this website gets attacked or burnt or crashed, it really doesn't matter, right? It's not an important website for me over here right now, but you might be hosting something that really needs top-notch security. So you'll want to host it on a private subnet. The whole process is pretty much the same, except you need to be very clever with your networking and how you connect your, your public and private subnets, etc making sure they have the right security to talk to each other using something called a NAT gateway, etc. And that can be quite expensive to do as well. When I was looking at my costs on AWS and I was doing that for a different site, the costs were a lot higher than I thought they would be. But again, your website would be more secure. So I hope that this series has been quite useful for you. If there's anything that you feel you need to know, i.e. you'd like to go through here the AWS ECS, let me know and I'll put a tutorial together on that. I do plan to cover on this channel Stripe, how to do Stripe integrations, PayPal integrations, etc., and how to get all of that working so that you can also charge for your services. But that is for another series. Till the next one. Take care. Talk soon.